Hello, and welcome to the Ghosts of Howard Hall. My name's Simon. And I'm McKelly. And I'm Molly. What? Security! <laughs> yeah, this is our special 50th episode extravaganza, and we are joined today by Molly. Welcome, Molly. Hello, thank you. Hi, Molly Ray. Hello. Molly is going to ask us the questions, and we are going to uh, answer them. We thought we would... Uh, we thought, given that this was going to be a video, that me and McKelly were just not enough. We needed to right. That's right. make it a little easier on the eye. We needed to be some, honest. at least one rose between us two thorns. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so, um, so, yeah, I mean, the format's going to be Molly's going to ans- ask us questions, uh, many of which came from our listeners. Thank you so much for sending them in. Yes, thank um, you. That was, that was a lot of fun getting those questions from everyone. Yeah. Some of which Molly just made up. Mostly to tease us, yeah, I think. Yeah, I just went on the email and just decided to type up some... <laughs> no no chapter uh, talk so... today. No no particular chapter talk. This is all just uh, the questions yeah. you guys sent us and whatever it is my dear daughter uh, asks us, we'll have to answer, I guess. Yeah. It's going to be a unique episode. <laughs> all right, so Malls, what, what do you got for us? All right, so the first group of questions we have about the podcast... You guys ready for your first okay, one? Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're not like trivia. I mean... No, hopefully not. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. All right. Do any of your immediate family listen to the podcast? Uh, Simon, why don't you go first? Mine. You might have none better luck. <laughs> no. no, none of mine do. I've got a couple of extended uh, relatives back home in England who uh, who say they do. One of them has emailed me to say that my accent is terrible. <laughs> So that's so they proof. listen to it enough. <laughs> exactly, they listen to it enough. <laughs> my, uh, my my brother listens. My brother does listen. That he does. We we appreciate yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> I have well, my older sister, my older sister who also happens to be named Molly. Uh, she listens. So that's uh, like you know, I come from a very large family. So I'm one uh, one for eight of siblings that listen. So not the yeah. not the best percentage, but you know. I think Stacy made it through half of the prologue once. Oh uh, yeah. So. How, and while we're at it, how about you, Molly? Do you listen? Um, <laughs> I've claimed to listen to the first uh, three episodes, so we've got that running for me, <laughs> and that's that's what I'm gonna stick with. I'm, I'm perturbed by your "I've claimed to." <laughs> yes, I've claimed to listen to three episodes. I've got only forty-seven All more right. to go. Hey, I'm listening to this so, yeah, one. I'm- Four down. That's right. Oh, you're gonna listen to this one. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I went from one, two, three to forty or fifty. Yes. <laughs> okay, hit us with the next one. What do you got? All right. So the next question that we have is, how has a coronavirus affected your podcasting? Well, I'll say this: uh, I haven't seen Simon in person since what March fifteenth or sixteenth or something like that. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I mean, I don't think it's affected us that much because, I mean, basically we're just an audio podcast, so we get together and chat, but it has meant things like this. I mean, I mean, luckily the listeners didn't get to see the last half hour of us trying to cobble three bits of kit together to make this happen. <laughs> Maybe they should have. It would have been, uh, yeah. been humorous for them. <laughs> that, that is much more difficult uh, remotely than it is together. So, it is. Uh, and when, when it first happened, when we first sometimes. started recording remotely, uh, we we experimented with several different methods of recording that the, the first few did not were not exactly flawless. But, but I think I think the method we have now we were doing pretty well with it's uh it's working yeah, out so far yeah. pretty well i i mean i think you can see the qual- my, the quality on my end is not as good as it is on your end but that could just be the subject not the not the equipment <laughs> i disagree Molly, hit us all right are you guys one. ready for the next one all right yep so you, you can you can chip in with observations, Molly. You don't have to just ask the questions. If you if you've got things to say, you say. Oh, it. trust okay. me, I have a su- surprise question at the end. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have a sense of whether your listeners are a reading along, b have already read it, or c letting the two of you do the hard work? Um, 
That's an interesting question. I, it is. I think we definitely have a mixture of these. I know, I know for a fact we have some people who are not reading the book who are just just listening to us. Let let yeah. us do the work right. for them. Um, I know my sister doesn't read the book. She just relies on us right. to take her chapter yeah. by chapter. Doing the hard work. My, my brother. Yes. Yeah, my brother is the same. He's not listening to the. He's not reading the book either. Um, we've definitely got people who were reading along, but the problem is, is that the pace that we go is too slow for most people to actually That's, read along with us. I agree. Yeah. I think probably the majority of folks are in the B group or the C group. If you're right. reading along with us, I'll say when I prepare for an episode, I probably between reading and audio booking the chapter. On average, listen and read it five to six times. So if you're if you're reading along with us, you are moving at a snail's pace, and I, and I appreciate you at least <laughs> taking the time to to do that. <laughs> I think if anyone is, they should frankly join the podcast. You know, because <laughs> right. they're the only other people going at the pace we're going. Right. You're gonna get so many emails asking if you could join the podcast. Like, hey, well, well, <laughs> we would love special guests. That would be cool. Yeah. Next All one. Right. Next one. Yeah. All right. How has it been trying to avoid spoilers? That's a good one. It is a good one. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a constant challenge. It um, is one thing that one thing that surprised me is when when you really analyze it the way we're doing is the mysteries sort of unravel. So the 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 thing is, we're in a difficult situation because we know the answers to the questions. But we're analyzing the data that we have so carefully that we could crack the problems without knowing the answers. Yeah, and so we try really difficult. hard not to do that. Yeah, but but I mean seriously, there's there's a couple of them where we've been like, okay, the logical conclusion of what I've just said is, and that would be a spoiler. So yeah. then we buy, then we back off that. But yeah, that that's the big that's the big one for me. Even right. sometimes, like I do remember that one episode when we were discussing it was in news and notes and we were discussing two characters uh being in a scene together um and Uh, we realized oh shoot we can't we can't discuss this because then it it shows that these characters are still alive at this point so we had had the whole segment had to hit the cutting floor it was two actors who represented two characters who in the books have never met so there was no reason for us to think there would be a scene together. But we know that these two characters have a long span in the in the right. sh- book and show. And so we uh yeah, we had to pull that out. Yep. Lots of that that kind of stuff happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. But 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 that's I mean, for me the conclusion was when I did all this is I couldn't believe that I didn't crack these mysteries the first time around. I gotta read books more carefully. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a lot easier when you know the answer. That's true. That is true. All right. Next question we have. What was... Molly, Molly, let me just interrupt a second. If you feel like we're petering out, you just go ask the next question. Don't wait for us to give you the answer. We'll ramble on. You, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You are in in charge. You are the boss of this interview. We're just here to serve. All right. What was your favorite podcast episode? Okay. That is a tough one. That really is, because you got to think about we've it. We've done fifty, yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, the the one that 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 stands out is the episode. I don't even remember what episode it is. It was a, it was a Catelyn episode where she's riding through the veil with uh, her uncle Brendan, and what what I remember most about it is just that we were laughing so much and we had some very <laughs> well placed. Uh, Rick and jokes that put us over uh, the edge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, the best episodes have Rick and jokes, and that's right. that's true. Um, yeah, I think I think generally we're getting better. So I think there's a sort of like a general improvement. I think they're they're, they're getting we're getting a little bit more comfortable, a little bit slicker with our presentation. So I think generally, but um, Cat Seven, which might actually be the same one that you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure. It might but be. Cat Seven is the one that stood out for me because um, we. I really enjoyed our back and forth on the motives for John Aaron's murder, and um, in that conversation, I, I'd like to just 
take an opportunity here to praise McKelly because in that conversation we exactly did what we were just talking about we <laughs> we s- spilled over into spoilers and McKelly was able to edit it out so that the spoilers were gone and it still sounded like we were having a really good conversation so that was that's one that I really uh, latch on to <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question. Oh, oh. But, but actually, one other thing, Molly, sorry, you're right. You can always interrupt, but my absolute favorite bit of any episode was John 2, when um, when McKelly revealed that I'd plagiarized uh, the book. <laughs> that was my favorite part of all. It, it makes me laugh every time I think uh, about it. That was good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it was. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you you remember it well, Molly. Yeah, I remember it by heart. What's the most surprising or unexpected aspect of doing a podcast? Oh, man, there's been so many. But one that stands out, one that, like, caught me off guard is that sometimes listeners, like, they reach out to us and... um some of the things that they reference make me a little self-conscious because it, it just reminds me that our listeners are like actually listening to everything we say. And I'm not very used to that in my, my personal life. <laughs> Usually in, in real life, I'm the only one listening to me talk. And most times I'm barely doing that. So <laughs> we recently had a listener reference the, um, a pes- pessimistic optimist thing and I was like oh man someone is actually listening to me say that <laughs> I've been saying that for years I don't think anyone's ever noticed <laughs> I've heard it like four times and I still don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was surprised by him how impressed my son was when we started doing this but it didn't last I mean it, it lasted like five days and then he was like yeah whatever um, but I'm constantly amazed by the global reach you know we've got listeners on every continent in yes. 70 countries and that just blows my mind to think about it because again it's just me and you having a chat you know right. it's, it, we almost don't need to record it we're just having a chat and having fun and uh, yeah we've got yeah. listeners in 70 countries which just that is, that is exactly true it's almost like We've taken our lunch conversations and uh, just broadcast them to the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we have the next group of questions, which is oh, about... Oh, we're through that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this next group of questions is about bo- uh, the book itself and the TV show. Okay. okay. All right. This is a long one, so here we go. <laughs> Do you think Caitlin would have been more accepting of John if Robert had used his kingly power to remove the stain of bastardly from him before Eddard brought him back to the Winterfall after Robert's rebellion? Or would she have been even colder toward him because John Stark would have been a potential threat to Rob's birthright? I remember this question. I apologize if some of the names were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said the Winterfall. The Winterfall. <laughs> the Winterfall. Is that uh, how is it's it Winterfell, pronounced? But oh, Winterfell. Fell. But that's oh. okay. <laughs> hey, the more uh, you know. Who, who's this from, McKelly? This is from Josh. Is this it? is from Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for this question, Josh. It was it was thought provoking. So I, um, this one. So the question is just to summarize the question because I I got lost in the question because of all. Uh, Molly's funny mispronunciations. Um, but <laughs> the question is, if you, yeah, from from what McKelly told us on, on in episode forty nine, King Robert and Ned actually have the power to legitimize someone who is base born, and so John could have been made a legitimate child of Ned Stark. Question is. Would if they'd done that with John earlier in his life, would that have made Catelyn's a relationship with John better or worse my initial instinct was it would have made it it wouldn't have made a great deal of difference but it would have made it slightly worse the reason I think that is because I think the reason she doesn't like John is because of her because she feels that Ned was unfaithful to her and whether John whether John's legitimate or not does not change that so um, my yeah. feeling was it wouldn't make a great deal of difference but I think it would have made things worse because then he would have been as you were saying last time, McKelly, 
then he would have been a significant contender right. for uh, the heir to Winterfell. He is younger than Rob, so he wouldn't have been the heir to Winterfell. But if anything happened to Rob, to, he would he would if, definitely if he could John, definitely uh, jump Bran in uh, the pecking order. Exactly. If he accidentally killed him during a sparring accident, you know. Right. Right. <laughs> now, I agree with everything you said, but just to bring up um, Josh's counterpoint, Josh felt like, I, I hope I'm, I'm quoting you correctly, Josh. I uh, apologize if I, if I get anything wrong, but Josh's thought was him being John Stark would not allow Kat to be as mean and cruel to him and mistreat him as much as she did him being Jon Snow. In removing that aspect, she might embrace him more, might have more care for him because she's she hasn't been able to mistreat him. I, yeah. I get where he's coming from. I definitely get where he's coming from. I, I, yeah. I can see that. But I think she would be more inclined to find more ways to be secretly nasty to him. And that's that's what I think. I think... I think that that might have created a veneer which might have made his life better, you know, because she, that veneer would have meant that she couldn't be openly hostile to him. But I think it would have been like a pressure cooker for her. I think her hatred for him would have actually got worse and worse under the under that veneer. Yeah. So, but it's a, it's definitely an interesting thought. All right. What's up next? You two answered that very well. Thank you. Is that what you were thinking <laughs> too? <laughs> totally. I didn't, I didn't notice uh, the, the water fell part was very waterfall very moving waterfall <laughs> you're getting worse <laughs> if you could live anywhere in westeros or essos hope i said that correctly where and why close enough uh well you know me if i could live anywhere uh in the known world i would certainly choose dorn no, obviously everyone knows I'm no. joking. I would have chosen the Vale. Uh, I would love yeah. to live in the Vale. I'd love to live in the Vale right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it, the descriptions. Uh, I always read you guys the descriptions because <laughs> I enjoy them so much. They just paint a picture of a, a place that I would really like to spend my life in. So, so you'd go right now, even with Lysa Aaron in charge. Well, there, there's the catch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know that that's the toss up. Maybe if I if I could uh, be a lesser lord somewhere, stay out of okay. her uh, path. <laughs> You're just gonna live the humble pastoral life, in right? Wales, yeah. It's a nice question. I like it. Um, I'm going to surprise. I think I don't think you'll have thought you think that I would say this, but um, I have always loved university towns. I used to live in Cambridge in England, mm-hmm. so I think I would like to live in Old Town. I like it. Where the Good answer. Trained, yeah. Yeah. You know, this was the most asked question by our listeners. Oh, was it? Yep. Multiple people asked this one? Multiple people. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, think... I could tell that you guys really thought about that. <laughs> we think about this all the time, Molly. That's right. <laughs> Where would we go if we could get away from our families? <laughs> <laughs> not you, Molly, obviously. Of course, of course not. not. I, would I would take be you with along. me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, would love the, you would love the eerie. You don't know what I'm talking about, but you would love it. Nope. <laughs> Sounds cool, though. You'd go up in the turn- turnip basket for sure. Again, you don't know what I'm talking about, but you would. <laughs> All right. Hit us with another. All right. Oh, this is a good one. If you could belong to any house in Westeros, which house? Um, Gosh, that is... I, yeah. I have this a couple one. of thoughts. I, I, I really like the North. I love the North, and so I would love to be. A, and my favorite name from the North is the Carstarks. I just love that name. <laughs> I think it would be genuinely awful to be a Carstark because it's like <laughs> permanently winter and just miserable. But yeah. I've, I've always loved that. But I am. I actually really don't like to be, you know, put out by weather conditions and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ultimately, I think I'm gonna gonna go for Tyrell. Because then I'd be both wealthy and peaceful and live yep. in a sort of like a nice place. Yeah, that's a very so good answer. Tyrells would be a, a very solid choice. You definitely can't go wrong there. If I if I didn't choose the Tyrells, I would probably choose the Aarons, Big Shock, as I could then rule from the Erie and bump Liza out the uh, the moon door. <laughs> and... <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe uh little sweet robin would uh would you know i wouldn't i can't i wouldn't push i would not push sweet robin out the moon door i might just send him to uh dragonstone to uh foster with stannis yeah <laughs> <laughs> so all right w- what's the next one all right before we move on to the next one am i allowed to say what house i think you two would want to belong to or belong sure. to? please yes all right Your opinion matters I feel like both of you, the house that you would belong to would probably be either Gryffindor or Hufflepuff. Either one of the two. <laughs> I can't exactly pick, but that's what I'm going to say. Bravo. Thank you. Thought about that one while you guys are talking. I'm, I'm, like, I'm pure I know what I'm going to say. Just FYI. I'm pure. Next one. If you were born into a house that you best fit into... Which house? Ooh, slightly do, different question. Do you want to do you want to uh, do a switcheroo on this one, and I'll tell you what house I think you belong in. Do you tell me what house? Why don't you? Okay. Why let's don't you? Well, I have two. I have two answers for this, unfortunately. And I so uh, <laughs> House Royce would be the logical fit based on certain aspects of you. House Royce is hold words. on, hold hold on, hold on, just a second before you go any further. You want me to die in the prologue? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what you want not sir waymar royce <laughs> <laughs> okay just to Yon, have you would right, be yon royce um okay. there uh, so uh house house royce's words are we remember and <laughs> <laughs> touche no one remembers better than simon <laughs> uh, i've no, heard of uh, stories legends it, so my that was my joke house uh Royce, okay. House Royce. Uh, my real house would be House Tully of the of River Run. Tully, yes. Interesting. Why Tully? Because Explain their yourself. words are family, duty, honor, and I've known you basically the whole your whole your son's whole life, and you take your family duty and your familial duties very seriously. Well, you did a lot more. You did a lot more thinking about this question than I did. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I really phoned this in. I'm sorry. But you notice I left for, that honor part out. <laughs> yeah. For no reason that I can think of, I had a feeling about House Martell for you. So when you said Dawn earlier, I was like, oh, I was right. It's true. But you were just joking. I, I but uh, yeah, House Martell, the one thing I thought, the one thing that sort of like drew me to House Martell was, well, first of all, hot weather. I thought you might like the hot weather down there. The um, the other aspect is it is that there are a lot of very strong female characters in Dawn there who could boss you around, and I think you'd feel right at home. <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I don't know what their words are and how perfect they are. I'm sorry, you you you've outdone me on that one. Un- but I liked your choices. Thank you. <laughs> unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Yeah. Also partly true. <laughs> partly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Malls, what you got? Give us the next one. All right. Next one we have... I feel like this is going to be a tough one for Dad. He always has trouble with favorites, so... Well, I except do. when it comes to oh, siblings, it's a favorite. because... it's a favorite one. Uh-oh. M- Molly, Molly, let me let into a secret. It's you. <laughs> I mean, who's here right now? Where's Ethan? I don't know. <laughs> Who is your favorite character... And why? Let me let me go first on this one, McKay. Yeah, yeah. I, I have found that the reread has changed my opinion on that. Oh, okay. So people who were my favorite characters the first time around are less so this time, and that's maybe because I see them in you know through the lens of what I know is going to happen to them in the future. A little right. Bit, you know. Yeah. So, so I'm. I'm Trying not to spoil anything, the one the one example I have of that is John. I think you and I have said very many nice things about John on the podcast. Yes, and then just the other time we were talking about him, I realized he hadn't done anything to warrant our praise yet. Really, <laughs> I mean, like he just a handful of little things, but yeah. not really that much. So I think we're slightly influenced by future events. Um, I love. Personally, I love the people who do the scheming and the sort of deep thinking. So that would be like Tyrion and Varys and Littlefinger to a certain extent. Um, again, some of that is show influence because Varys hasn't done much yet either. 
Uh, but if you wanted a minor character shout out, I really love Cyril Farrell, <laughs> Arya's dancing master. Just so. I think he's great. <laughs> yes. That's a good answer. I like that. Uh, well, basically, I named all the characters in the book. I couldn't do that. Can... <laughs> <laughs> Just keep naming them. Eventually, you'll get it right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I don't, uh, like Molly said, I'm terrible with favorites. Uh, but so I, up to this point where we are in the story, um, my favorite character would, I guess, be Ned. And I know we harangue him and we give him a hard time for his rigidity and uh, how he doesn't, uh, how how he doesn't uh, roll with the punches very well. But I I feel for him. I appreciate what he's trying to do. I appreciate the moral dilemmas and struggles that he has. And I get what he's trying to do. I do. I really appreciate it. And it also might be the fact that he's kind of... The story is revolving around Ned at the moment. And it, it makes it easy to uh, to pull for him. But yeah. as far as, as the story goes, I have a, a different favorite character who I can't bring up just yet. Because this character goes through a major character arc. A lot of character development, a lot of uh, a lot of things change in this character's uh, world and in, in the way he looks at the world, and I appreciate that. I, I'm a really a big fan of character development in stories, and I think this character goes on quite the journey as a person. So. I'm curious to know to know who you mean, but I won't pry since it's a spoiler. <laughs> but at the moment, I guess it would be Ned. I, that's probably a, an easy yeah. way out, but. No, it's, it's. I like Ned. I think I think it's your honest answer. That's what we were looking for. All right, what's next? You guys ready for the next one? Yep. All right, we have another favorite. Dad, oh. I bet you're excited. Always. What was your ch- favorite chapter so far? We'll be right back. Hello, friends. Are you ready to make some unforgettable memories? Well, if so, consider the Marriott Bonvoy program. Discover the perfect destination for your summer getaway and unlock exclusive deals on luxurious accommodations. With our affiliate partnership, you'll enjoy unbeatable savings and a seamless booking experience. Don't let summer slip away. Visit Marriott Bonvoy today and make this vacation season one for the books. Use our Ghosts of Heron Hall affiliate page to check it all out and buy Bonvoy points or give some as a gift. The link to our page is in the show notes. I, I I don't have a specific answer for this, um, but I really enjoy the chapters, the early chapters of this book. They they just give me like a, a warm and fuzzy feeling. I, I read them. I've read them so many times, not just for this reread, but read them or audiobook them. Like basically up until Ned gets to King's Landing, when everything is still fairly sweet and innocent, I just I just really love that. That section of the book is probably the the one I gravitate toward the most, but that's not a specific so chapter. A, sorry, it's that's an interesting answer. It, I think that reveals a bit of your character actually, because I think um, so. Lord of the Rings, everything in the Shire is great, right? Once they leave the Shire, it starts to go off the rails. Right, you know, that, that's the best part of that book. <laughs> Everybody's happy and peaceful, and nothing's going wrong. Right, exactly. I I, I like when nothing is going wrong. <laughs> Um, I would say that I, I love, I love anything with plots and assignations. So everything that goes on in King's Landing, I like. So, so the opposite of you in so many ways here. Right. Um, yeah. But, uh, maybe Ned 12, when Ned finally understands what John Aaron was. So, so it's actually, it's the combination of the Sansa chapter that preceded Ned 12 and then Ned 12, when he finally sees the light of what John Aaron was uh, investigating and confronts Cersei. Yeah. That confrontation with Cersei is it's a great, chapter. great stuff. I mean, yeah. it is, it's, it's clutches your heart because you're like, oh my God, he's making a <laughs> terrible decision here. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's great writing and really fun. So that one. It is. Good, good answer. All right. Hit us. All right. It's like she's not listening. It's like she falls asleep while we talk. <laughs> I'm just falling asleep with possibly, my eyes open. What could possibly <laughs> bore her about our answers to these questions? <laughs> oh. All right. Next. Oh, Ned is in here. 
the famous Ned that we have been talking about. What right. are the thoughts on differences between Stannis Baratheon, Baratheon and Ned Stark? I could see your face. You had no idea what, how like, that last name was pronounced. <laughs> <Barathe>. <laughs> Um, well, we, we've actually talked about this a little bit on the podcast. There really aren't that many. I mean, again, a lot of this is we've never met Stannis Baratheon yet. I know you don't know who he is, Molly, but in the book, he's only ever been talked about by third parties. We've never actually had him on. He's never actually been on the stage for us all to yeah, see, see right. witness. So we're basing it purely off the interactions of uh, uh, the, the descriptions of other characters of him. But it sounds like they're exactly the same. It sounds like they are basically the same character, <laughs> minus perhaps a loving air which Ned gives off, which yes. Stannis doesn't appear to have. Yes, and that seems to be the only thing. Yeah, <sighs> that's so. Yes, they have a lot of similar characteristics. They're both very rigid and uh, stick to their morals. Um, but I think Robert, Robert appreciates ned a lot more than he appreciates stannis because i think ned can laugh at himself he 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 can be a little more uh, enjoyable to be around not not quite as hard as a stone i, I think he's got a soft spot pro- possibly from having all these kids you know that the kids will soften yeah. you up where stannis just has the one right just shireen yeah, yeah. But i i like that about ned i like that even though he is stoic and mostly serious he also can laugh a little bit at himself and you know he tolerates robert pretty well the two of them get along pretty well so yeah yeah that's reasonable with which character would you most like to share meat and mead did i say that correctly meat and mead all right i'm glad i'm glad you don't know what meat is (laughs) yeah so um I have a I have a thought on this one. Um, Darian Darian was appointed um, for being such a good gourmand. Right. He was appointed the guy who got to <laughs> test the food. He might be the man to have dinner with. Yeah, just a thought here. Good answer. I like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Someone that's funny. This is not as easy a question as you might think, but if I had to pick one, I think I would pick uh, King Robert Baratheon first of his name oh. because sharing meat and mead with Robert would have to be a fun time. <laughs> You, that's, that is a good answer, actually. I've, I, I've gone a little bit more... I, I thought Tyrion would be a good time. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I think you'd have a, you'd have a laugh would. with Tyrion. But then if, if, if there's an opportunity to sort of pick people's brains, then either Varys or Littlefinger. Yeah, but you know who else I thought of? Old Nan. She, she might not have, be all with it, but you'd hear some pretty cool stories over... You, it would be very entertaining. <laughs> Scare the dickens out of you. I don't know if she has enough teeth left to eat the meat, though. Yeah, you you have to chew hers for her and then hand it over. Like a bird. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Which Game of Thrones celebrity would you most like to have on the show? Hmm. (laughs) Would the the correct answer be uh, Jason Momoa? Just because we're always trying to get him on the show. (laughs) (laughs) if he comes out, he's kicking you up. But <laughs> uh, I do have um, an answer. Uh, I mean, obviously, cool, any well, of them would be great. Jason Momoa would be fantastic yeah, yeah. to have on the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think my favorite actor from the Game of Thrones movies, or movies, TV shows, uh, is Lena Headey. I, oh. I think she would be great. She's She seems so cool and fun and such a stark contrast to her character, Cersei Lannister, I think she would be a blast to have on the show. She would really, she would bring that humor that we've always tried and failed to bring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's a good choice, actually. I think you need a big star. And I, Peter Dinklage would be fascinating. Oh, yeah, him. yeah. He would be. I'd love to talk to him. Yeah. Um, he's Tyrion Lannister, for those who don't know the show. Uh, but yeah, anyone. Man, it'd be great. I mean, was it, was it Josh who mentioned that his cousin had been an extra? I think that was Lewis. Or was that was Lewis? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Thank you, Lewis, for getting in touch. I got excited by that. I was like, "Let's get yeah, Lewis's cousin." Right. On. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Moving on to the last group of questions, we have in general. 
General okay. knowledge, okay. Yes, okay. these group of questions are just in general. What is your favorite book of all time? Oh, gosh. <sighs> oh, favorites. Everybody wants to know favorites. I need to start thinking Wait, more about favorites. Wait, real quick, let me put in. You have to choose something other than the Game of Thrones. Yes, you yes, have I... to choose something other than the thing that you've made a podcast about. Yeah, that's <laughs> yes, true. Yes, understood. understood. <laughs> well, I, I think we that's, both that's really. I think we both liked Lord of the Rings, and we've yep. also talked about the um, the Patrick Rothfuss King Killer Chronicles. I think for both of us, that's probably on our list of absolutely. Yep, books, definitely. But, uh, I and... mentioned the three body problem. I was uh, thinking that by... as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a great book. And and that's by um, Liu Cixin. Liu Cixin. Okay. I got one of my Chinese colleagues to help me with the pronunciation there. So Liu Cixin. Good job. Uh, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Oh, yeah. In fact, anything by David Mitchell. They're amazing. Um, I like Philip Roth. The Plot Against America is one of my favorites. Uh, Margaret Atwood, particularly Oryx and Crake. I love all those books. I highly recommend any of those books to anyone. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I'd, obviously I agree with you of Lord of the Rings. That's where I, I cut my teeth in the fantasy world. And I've, I've read those a whole bunch of times. A big fan. Uh, King Killer Chronicle, Three Body Problem. Definitely I would put those on my list. I got really big into the Earth's Children series, which you have to. <laughs> if you're going to read the Earth's Children series, you have to get really big into it because... There's a bunch of books, and they're all really big. So um, that's the uh, series that starts with a Clan of the Cave Bear. Uh, I really like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also um, I really liked uh, Prayer for Owen Meany and To Kill oh, a yeah. Mockingbird. Who's, who's that? Uh, who's this Owen John, Meany? John Irving. John Irving. They made a yeah. movie out of it called Simon Birch. That sounds a lot better. Wonderful. Moving on to the next question. Just how bad is Simon's memory? <laughs> I, would, I don't remember who said this. The golden in. question. Uh, I would say comically so. <laughs> and it's not just with A Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, like we just discussed, Simon and I read a lot of the same books. And if he reads it first and then I read it, I will try to talk to him about things that are happening in books that, I mean, he just named books that he loves, and I know he loves these books. And I will mention plots, like large plots, major characters, and I'll, I'll, I'll be trying to ask him questions about it, and I'll get that blank stare, like, what huh? are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, actually, a good example of that is Plot Against America, which I just mentioned. I really enjoyed Plot Against America, one of my favorite books of all time. I just recently watched the HBO show of it. I did not remember what was going to happen. I was <laughs> like, ooh, ooh, this is this exciting. Is exciting. <laughs> it's like watching a show all over again. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, in actual fact, actually, I found that the books that I remember best are the ones that then had a movie made of them that I could watch and sort of remind myself of what happened in the uh -huh, books. Right. It just it just goes. It just goes. No. Uh, yeah. The, 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 my frame of reference here for this is definitely... The whole spoiler debacle back in John Two that 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 is a perfect example because I I didn't remember spoil I didn't remember having the dream that I described I didn't remember when you came to me and said oh look you plagiarized I didn't remember any of that so uh, yeah but but it My makes for so much fun not good. oh we do have fun with it yeah I do worry sometimes though because it's it's atrocious my memory the funny thing is Carson will point this out I can remember minute details of soccer matches I've been to and That's goals right. I've scored. You've, you have uh, re relayed minute details to uh, soccer matches that are very old. Yeah, yeah, 30, 40 years ago. I remember soccer matches like the back of my hand. Yeah. So. It's perhaps selective. But, but let me say, his memory does not in any way affect his intelligence. One of the smartest people well, I know, so... Thank you, but it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it shouldn't, but it has a. It definitely has an impact. All right. The next question we have is one that I would also like to know. Do you listen to other podcasts? We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by Audible. 
To get a free audiobook, or two if you're an Amazon Prime member, go to our exclusive URL, audibletrial.com slash ghostsherrenhall. You can find the link in our show notes. I listen to a few sporadically. The, the only one I routinely listen to is called Football Weekly from The Guardian in England. That's uh, that's one I listen to. Yeah, you tell Car- me. Uh, you you Car- tell me bits from that from time to time. Bi- yeah, that that's very funny. It's, it's worth a listen. Carsten and I listen to a few true crime ones here and there when we're cooking together, but not, not religiously. Blech. I, I might be the only person in the world that couldn't care shouldn't say couldn't care less about true crime. I mean, they're all very sad and tragic. And that's part of the reason why I I don't really, have never really gotten into true crime is there's enough, like, uh, there's enough stressful things out there that, that stress me out without adding more to it by learning about other people's serious misfortune and, and, uh, and such. Uh, so I don't listen to any true crime. I did listen to Serial. Uh, the Adnan Saeed. That's true crime. We, we both listened yeah. to that. We fell on opposite yeah. sides of the uh, guilt or innocence. Um, yeah, I mean, I was right. You were wrong. I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if our listeners could figure out who was on whose side. That would be an interesting experiment. Th- <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, but I do listen to a few Steeler podcasts. Molly and I, uh, we listen to the Office Ladies on our way to and from swim practice. And are, are those ladies from the Office, the TV yeah. show? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Molly, Pam and Angela, who both play that. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, Molly is uh, a Office expert. So. Hey, it's better than watching the Office for the fifteenth time in a row. So, at least to get what's going on in the behind scenes. Right. Uh, so yeah, and I, I also like ones where I learn things like Ted Radio Hour, uh, This American Life, Make Me Smart, and and I do try to support some some of the smaller indie podcasts such as us. And so I listen to there's a um, a King Killer Chronicle podcast that I listen to called Tales from the Waystones. So oh, I'm going to listen to that. That sounds good. All right, you guys ready for the next question? Yeah. Okay. What are your favorite movies? Oh, with the favorites. Everybody with the favorites. <laughs> if you could watch one movie right now, what would it be? Uh, well, but that's... I feel like... I, 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 cannot, I, I can never answer with just one. I have to give like four or five. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no way I'm saying one here. I feel like I would have an answer for the both of you. Oh, I, well, why don't you go first then? So that... Well, I I know Dad really really likes Guardians of the Galaxy. I do. So oh, I feel yeah. like both of you guys would both like Guardians of the Galaxy. I do very much. I, yeah, that's all. That would have been on my list. Yes. I liked it, Molly, but I'm a bit more of a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> He's older than Let's me. Significantly exactly. older than me. <laughs> Significantly older. So um, I loved the French movie Amelie. I just love that film. And I can't. I could always watch that. Uh, ditto for the movie Gravity. I think Gravity is one of the most amazing films I've ever seen. Oh, um, yeah. I, I love Star Wars because I'm just a big kid. And then I, there's a bunch of British movies I wish everyone would see: Nil by Mouth, uh, Lady Bird, Lady Bird, The Wind That Shakes the Barley, Naked. All this right, is the look. Those don't mean anything. This is the look I get yeah, yeah. when I talk to you about yeah, yeah, books you've yeah. read. <laughs> Except I've never mentioned these to you before, so this is no, all. you but, haven't. But I do have, I, I do have a true crime recommendation, which is this is a controversial one because this is a hard movie to watch. But there's a movie called Dear Zachary, which is an absolutely amazing movie. But you must, if you do decide to watch it, first of all, brace yourself because it's a horrible story. And second, do not, under any circumstances, get any spoilers. Okay. You have to watch it without spoilers. Okay, and honestly, Franz Kafka would watch that movie and say, "Oh my God, that's messed up. That is messed up." Because <laughs> <laughs> what the people in that movie—it's documentary. What they live through is amazing. Oh. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. If you want to watch a movie about people who live through something truly messed up, now you know. I, I uh. Yeah, I didn't go that uh, that serious with any of the ones coming off the top of my head here. I really like the movie The Martian. You and I read the book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like The Martian, too. I right? really, I, I love the book, but I also, the movie, they, what I, one of the things I liked about the book was how science-y it got. 
but they cut all that out for the book and it made for a more fun movie. You know, it was kind of just right. like, it was kind of fun. Um, I'm also a, a big fan of uh, Zombieland. So I'm, I feel like I'm hitting hard just like you were. <laughs> hard, hard hitting movies here. <laughs> I'm waiting for the one that I know dad has to put on his list. Okay. What a, one I have to put on my list. I well, think she means Guardians of the Galaxy. Other than Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, other than, oh interesting. I, well, so there is a movie that, that I wasn't going to mention, but like you guys know, well, you guys know, our listeners don't know, but I was also very passionate about zombies up until zombies became everywhere. Passé. And, yes. uh... <laughs> That, played out yes exactly that i mean i still do i'm still very uh, they they intrigue me and fascinate me but that all began with the remake of the night of the living dead that i saw when i was a teenager and mm-hmm. i was uh kind of hooked by the concept of zombies so the remake of the night of the living dead i could watch pretty much any time because i really mm-hmm. but also zombie land as well I, i'm not a fast moving zombie fan i think that violates the the rules but it's really fun, and uh, and uh, yeah, so I give them a pass. But one thing I don't is, like, is that... I really don't like movies where everything goes wrong for the main character. I know everyone loved Meet the Parents. I did not care for it because everything was constantly going wrong for Ben Stiller's character, and it just bugs me. The Martian? <laughs> but he solves, he solves his problems. <laughs> he has okay. some upswings. <laughs> I think Ben Stiller gets the girl at the end of Meet the Parents. You know? <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, I see the contradiction there. I do. Yes. Uh, we, yes. We've belabored this point a while. I guess we should move on to the next question. I was waiting for you to put Jurassic Park. Oh, I do love the Jurassic Park series. I do. It's an- That's oh. another really like deep, hard-hitting, heavy movie series. The, this <laughs> does make it sound like I'm much older than you. <laughs> If you two could do another podcast together on another subject, mm. what would it be? Oh, boy. Well, I could do a soccer podcast. I don't need you for that. I'll just talk by myself <laughs> about soccer. That You know, that would and work fact, because you, cause I could ask the questions that, that would yeah, need to be asked, yeah, you know, because I, I would be yeah. coming in, like, running blind. And so I could ask the basic questions that you would know as obvious. But I would be like, wait. What's a pitch again? When if you said tales kit, for the waystone... you mean clothes? <laughs> <laughs> if this Tales for the, from the Waystone thing doesn't work out, we could do a King Killer Chronicles one. In fact, I would love to do that. I'd love yeah, to do Yeah, that was... Uh, I was if thinking we that had, as well. It, if we didn't have day jobs, I think we would be doing that. Oh, yeah, I'd love to do both. I, I think we would yeah. do a really great job. In fact, we discussed... Before we, before we uh, dove all in on A Song of Ice and Fire, we had discussed possibly... Um, doing a king killer chronicle one and uh mm-hmm. well we we chose we chose the one with only one million chapters instead of eight hundred thousand <laughs> chapters <laughs> uh i think i think it would be fun for you and i to do a podcast where we um we watch movies watch the same movie and then and then discuss it or watch a tv show or a, a series you know watch like a, a season of a tv show and then uh, discuss it i think that could be fun yeah, I sometimes worry that our thoughts aren't profound enough. But I guess as long as we're funny, right. we can paper over the cracks. You know? <laughs> I also think. I also think. I mean, we, we always we always, before we did a podcast, we always joked about making a podcast of our lunchtime conversations. Right. Yeah. We, because we, we we have like a lunch bunch at work, and and it has a sort of rolling cast of characters, and so when people miss it, they say, "Oh, I'll catch up on the podcast." You know, the, yeah. there was a podcast of this thing. I think that that would be the funniest thing we could possibly do because sometimes at lunch we we have really funny conversations at lunch but we would just be fired as soon as episode one dropped we, <laughs> we would, would lose our yeah. jobs it's absolutely scurrilous the things that are said so, uh, that would be fun though I, I think we would get a lot uh, of laughs that's for sure <laughs> yeah but we wouldn't have much material because then we'd be stuck you know, having been fired. Yeah. Of course, we don't do lunches anymore. So. <laughs> right. Our, our lunch times would certainly be wide open then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite TV show ever? Or, or not or, you have to answer them both. What is your favorite TV show currently? All right. I'll give you time to think. So Dad there's a British, 
there's a British comedy show called The Royal Family, which I think everyone should watch. It is pitch perfect. It's not very long. It's like 12 episodes, half an hour each. And it's very, very good. Okay. Um, I loved Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, I, I, you know, HBO always do good stuff. I really yeah. enjoyed The Leftovers. Uh, that's the one where like 2% of the world's population suddenly plink out of existence. Right, yeah, yeah. I like that concept. And that, we, we never finished yeah, the first yeah. season, but I like that concept. The... Um, I think that show, the show, the first season was based on the book and then it kept going and sort of adding new stuff. And it was absolutely just like, I mean, just breathlessly interesting every week. I was like, and sorry to be true crime again, but I think Making a Murderer is one of the most amazing TV shows I've ever watched. Yeah, I mean, you've just, mentioned that. Just yeah. amazing. Uh, uh, and currently, Watchmen and Derry Girls, top of my list. They've both been great. Both I haven't watched, so I should watch... I should watch Watchmen, huh? I've, I've been considering watching it. All right. So, I mean, if I'm being honest, my favorite TV show of all time is The Game of Thrones. So I, I might be a oh, little bit uh, self-serving as, as we're discussing it. But I know season eight, I didn't love season eight either. And I wish D&D could go back and re redo it. But And I know people complain about season seven. I personally didn't mind season seven. I liked a lot of things about season seven. But overall, I mean, that that is the show that led me down to the path of reading the books. So I also really like yeah. the show Justified. That was a really fun show with uh, Timothy Oliphant. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, I liked Breaking Bad and uh, Band of Brothers was another really good HBO. It was only a, it was a mini series. It was just, I think there was like 10 or 12 episodes or so. A TV show watching also diverges. I mean, I haven't watched, I haven't watched any of those shows. <laughs> Good thing we've got... Apart from Game of Thrones, that one. I'm right, watching. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my favorite currently... Oh, boy. <laughs> I guess I would say... Um, I guess I would say Last Kingdom, even though I know Simon isn't as big a fan. But I I really, uh, I really enjoy Last Kingdom. There's others that I really like as well, but I'll just go with Last Kingdom for now. Sounds, sounds good. All right, roll on. Okay. And we're moving on to the second to last question. We have, what one thing do you wish the listeners knew about the other guy? (laughs) Spill. I I might, I might have already mentioned this. Let me, let let me go. Yeah. I might have already mentioned this, but, but McKelly Ray does not drink. And it blows my mind that you can be a fun, interesting person and never drink. Because for me, it's like, you know, absolutely required without it i'm nothing and also that he does all the work for the podcast he does uh, he does 99 percent of the work for the podcast and he, i get half the credit and so everyone should know he's the one to thank well if you get a reply by email or twitter or instagram it's mckelly not me <laughs> to the point where if i ever do reply i say this is simon <laughs> well wow that was uh well thank you um yeah, I don't drink. Never have. Uh, what are you gonna do about it? I do try to still be, uh, still, still be fun and hang. I, I... You are. You are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I. This is the bit that's so incredible. Uh, the the thing about Simon that you pr- probably already know, fifty episodes in to our podcast, is he is probably the most laid back calming presence that uh, I've come across anyway. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way because on my very first day of work at the job where Simon and I met, I uh, was being shown around our office by uh, our, my team lead. And he, one of the very first things he told me was, you're going to share an office with a guy named Simon. You're going to love him. He's great. Nothing rattles him. Everything is like water off a duck's back to him. And... <laughs> He was spot on with that. And there's a lot of times when, like, you know, we're we're, we're kind of rushing to get things done here on the podcast or at work, even bigger deal there. <laughs> but he's always <laughs> just like, hey, we got this. It's going to be fine. You know, let's just roll. We'll figure it out. And we'll sort it if out. If we don't, it'll be okay. Right. So. You, you know what's funny is that I don't think of myself as that at all. Not even slightly. I think of myself as being like, wired and caffeinated and like 
It's strange you think that. Yeah. And and I, I'm curious. I, I might go and ask Carson and Lucas what they think because I don't think they think of me as laid back. <laughs> Well, very interesting. Thanks. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a compliment. I take it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's Who true. That? I've Who thought it for nearly me? 20 years. It was Rich. Rich told me that. Rich? Uh, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Nearly 20 years, and it, that uh, belief has not uh, been shaken from me. So. Well, there you go. Thanks. All right. You guys ready for the last question? Yes. Yes. Uh-oh. All right. Now, this last question is a special one because I have made up this one. All right, so what inspired you guys to create this podcast? And, like, do you do you personally enjoy having, like, taking the time and, you know, doing this podcast and getting to spend time with each other and talk about Game of Thrones? Uh, yes, to the second part, yeah. I mean, there's times when it's, uh, it can be stressful. It's work. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> especially when we're trying to double up on episodes for various reasons. Um. You know, that it can eat up the time. Luckily, I've got your <laughs> swim practices two hours a day that uh, give me a little bit of a window to just go and do that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I certainly still enjoy it. It's, it's fun. It's it's like I have said many times on um, it, social media, my 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 two favorite parts. One, hanging with one of my closest friends and talking about uh, something that I enjoy. And two, interacting with the with our listeners is a, a lot of fun. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to chip in on that. I think, I mean, it was it was McKelly. It was his idea, right. his brainchild. His, uh, he was the impetus behind it. I When he suggested it, I, I said yes, thinking he won't get around to that. But then he was uh, he was driven and he made it happen. I, I, I think I proposed the idea in like <laughs> June of last year and we recorded our first episode in like mid-September. So... So it took a while. That's to, drive. Uh, <laughs> That's drive right there. But uh, but I th- I honestly think it was joking about that podcast of, of of the lunch bunch. It kind of I think that possibly was the the first you know inkling that we might do a podcast. I think that partly I'm I'm projecting on you here because again you're the you're the brainchild. This is your brainchild. I'm saying that I think that that planted the seed. Yeah, sure. I hadn't thought about it that way, but yeah, sure. Yeah, I because we used to talk about Game of Thrones at lunch all the time. Right. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. We exactly. I I will. You know, listening to podcasts, I thought that would be fun to try. I have no idea how to go about doing it, but it would be fun to try. And I thought, what could we? What, what would be a good subject? And who would be a good partner? One, two. Got the subject. Got right. A song of ice and fire. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that it? Good good question, Molly. Thank you. <laughs> all right. That is all of your questions. Great. Well, wow. Now, just to speak to the listeners real quick, we, we really can't thank you enough for sticking with us for 50 episodes. I mean, uh, it's really, like I just said a minute ago, it really has been a, a true pleasure reach, uh, working with everyone who's reached out to us. Not working, but communicating his, to everyone who's reached out to us. It's... Uh, it's really been, it's really helped make this feel rewarding. If, if we would still kept doing it, if it was just the two of us and we forgot to turn the mic on, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you guys make it all that much more enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. And uh, speaking of our listeners, as current count, we uh, have listeners in 78 countries and 820 cities. So nice, yeah. yeah. That's a little intimidating to think about. Uh, going back to uh, earlier, that that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of people listening to the things that come out of our mouths. That's a lot. It's kind of intimidating. We should think about them a lot more. <laughs> we should, or we shouldn't. <laughs> if we, if I thought about that, it would probably uh, I'd probably just uh, get stage fright and not say anything. <laughs> and, and a little, a few, a few stats um, aside from Central North Carolina. Chicago is the is the top city um, has the most downloads oh, I did not in the know world. That. Yeah, followed by Dallas, and then uh, the top international city is is Islington. Is it Islington? Yeah, Dallas? it's part of London. Okay, part Islington, uh, England is third overall, and then Stockholm, Sweden, is only two downloads behind uh, Islington for fourth overall. 
wow so they're listening and it's not their first language good for them yeah because we must be dif- we must be difficult to you know if, if, if it's not your first language our accents must sort of jar and be difficult to parse sure yeah bravo to the bravo to the swedes who are listening yeah. forest hills michigan uh rounds out the top five by the way there we go forest hills michigan yeah I, let me echo that thank you so much for listening we we i mean it mckelly's right we we do this for fun and the fact that we've got this crop of listeners is just amazing to me and uh and it's touching and it's humbling and we are honored that you listen so please keep listening and uh, we'll keep churning it out yeah uh, here's to the next uh 150 episodes that would put us okay. uh, somewhere in the beginning of uh, storm of swords so <laughs> <laughs> this what was... did we do <laughs> at least we're likely to never run out of material <laughs> that's true that's true well listen uh, this has been a lot of fun i would like to thank molly for uh, doing this uh, she did a great job thank yes you, thank you malls thank you guys so much and speaking because i am your biggest fan watching a total of four episodes i want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day and to film all this stuff and thank you for bringing me on here i had a lot of fun well, you're very welcome oh. thank you very much baby all right Bye. Well, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.